targeted drive-by shooting. Both of them were mothers who left behind young children and families. These young women's passing left a void that was not expected. Earlier this summer, a young Hispanic woman fell victim to a depraved mother and daughter team who killed the young woman and cut her fetus from her womb, killing the baby as well, under the pretense of they want a baby. And last weekend, in Dayton, Ohio, and in El Paso, Texas, both cities are reeling from mass shootings that left at least 31 dead across the two cities. And even here in Chicago, last weekend, 59 people were shot, and seven were shot to death. I, all, I know all of this sounds like a horrific <coughs> newscast, but in, in the reality of our, in the world we live in, it further illustrates that we do not know where or when our time will come. Have we prepared ourselves for that time when we see the Son of Man? I have a series of questions that I want you to reflect on. Answer them silently or allow me to choose. I might even ask some of you to share your answers. Again, have we prepared ourselves for that time when we see the Son of Man? Have we lived a good and godly life? Ask yourself. <coughs> Have we prayed to God and tell Him that we love Him and love His creation? Yes? No? Do we do good things that show how much we actually love God? Do you do good things? Ask yourself. Do we honor God's name? Do we love ourselves so that we can take care of our neighbors? Do you take care of yourself? Do you eat right? Do you get enough sleep? Do you watch your weight? Do you take your medication? Do you do for you so you can do for others? <coughs> so that you can even do for you. You must love yourself. I see people making faces. We hit some points. <laughs> do we practice forgiveness and compassion with others? Ask yourself. Or do you say, oh, I can't wait to get them. I'm going to get them. Not to be Do we live with gratitude? Are we grateful for what we have? Do we appreciate what we have? Do we even know what we have? Do we fill our lives with love? Do you love someone? Does someone love you? Do you love people you don't even know? Have we determined our purpose in life? Think about it. Do you know why you're here? Or what you're doing here? Or what the end game going to be? What is your, what is your purpose? One, one person, what is your purpose? Think about it. Do we compare ourselves with others? Oh, she sure got a nice trim figure. I got to watch my weight. You know, I'm just a too fat. Here. Pretty car. Oh, wish I had that. Mm -hmm. Do we chase material things? She got a fine house. I'm gonna get that. Just like this. 
Is it all about me? Or do you give to others? Are you challenging? And I don't even want to challenge you, give you your time, you give you your care, you give you your concern. And lastly, do we follow the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If we ask ourselves these questions and answer them honestly, we can determine our readiness to meet the master. If I honestly answer the questions, I'm not getting the mark on some of them, but I am working on all of them. My growth towards living a spirit-filled life is a progressive thing. I doubt if any of us are the same person we were 20 or 30 years ago, even 10 years ago. For me, there is far less lip wagging, lip person, eye rolling, a smart mountain than in my younger years. I have grown up. My sister girl days are greatly diminished. <laughs> my understanding of how God wants me to live is an ongoing process. Like a child, I am growing in grace. I am maturing in a more spiritual way. I don't react the same way as I did to things years ago. I don't get upset as easily. I don't get mad as easily. I'm more analytical. I am like the servants in today's gospel, waiting for my master to return from the wedding feast. Only I am getting dressed, preparing for his arrival. I'm not fully dressed yet. I have on most of my clothing, but I still have to put on my pantyhose and shoes. <laughs> I'm a work in progress. I am working towards being fully dressed ready for service, and keeping my lamps burning. I know that many of you are like me. You are a work in progress. You are like a piece of pottery on the potter's wheel. The master is molding you and melting you into what he wants, to be, wants you to be. You too are getting dressed. Getting dressed and ready. And you will be ready for service when you are called. <coughs> Before I close, I would like to share a prayer that I discovered while preparing this sermonette. It is a prayer written by an Episcopal priest, Reverend Malcolm Boyd, who was a colorful character. He was a former movie producer in Hollywood, the first president of Hollywood's Television Producers Association, a nationally known civil rights activist and freedom writer who challenged the segregated transportation in the South. In 1965, he was writer in residence in Washington, D.C.'s Church of the Atonement and in 1976, he announced at an Episcopal church convention in Chicago that he was homosexual because he was tired of living the lie. At that time, that was not embraced by the Episcopal church. He was a brilliant writer and composed this prayer that I would like to share with you entitled, Are You Writing With Me, Jesus? It goes as follows. It's morning, Jesus. It's morning. And here's that light and sound all over again. I've got to move fast. Get into the bathroom, wash up, and grab a 
invite you to eat and run some more. I just don't feel like it. <clears throat> what I really want to do is to get back in bed, pull up the covers and sleep. And here I got to run all over again. Thank you.